Beverly Hale. And now, another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy, and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Our play is called By Day and By Night. And it's a story of six frightened people in a long-distance manhunt. And believe me, it'll keep you guessing right up to the final curtain. After Ken's important message, we'll be ready to begin the first act. The United States Army needs volunteers now. Young men and young women are needed for all types of jobs. Help keep your country strong. Enlist for active duty right away. Get full details from your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Be a volunteer today. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Mac, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of By Day and By Night. It's a continuous conflict that goes on by day and by night. Fought on all planes of life, its engagements are countless, its victories and defeats immeasurable. Every man and woman contributes in some way to one side or the other, and often to both. This is the ageless war between good and evil. Will you stop trying to sound like a herd of elk? All right. I'll shoot the lock off the door and you follow me through. Be ready for anything, now. Let's go. Follow me! Follow me! Come on! Looks like he gave us the slip, Lieutenant. Yeah, sure does. <sighs> what does he do, disappear into thin air? No, not quite. Here it is. He used his sheets and his blankets for a rope, went out this window. Just long enough to reach that balcony down there. Yeah. But how did he know we were... Stop asking stupid questions that I can't answer. You two stay here and go over this room. I'll have a couple of experts send around to help. If you find anything, anything at all, looks like it might help us. Call me at headquarters. Okay, Lieutenant. Don't feel too bad. We almost caught him. Oh, that news will thrill Captain Shea. Blast it, Mac. Okay, blast it. Then what? I don't know. I just don't know. Three months of work shot. Can you tell me how he found out? Nope, I can't tell you, Captain. That's oh, enough to drive you by me. He's taken the lives of six innocent people. Maybe more. Six that we're sure of. And we don't even know what he looks like. Or whether he's even a he. Look, don't make it any worse. I'm ready to turn in my badge as it is. That makes two of us. We're not dumb, Mac. We've been in this game a long time. But this baby has made us look like a bunch of monkeys. Goes deeper than that. I can admire brains even in a criminal. But this charmer comes as close to the word fiend as I ever want to get. Why don't you sit down? Oh, because I need exercise. But <laughs> Have a cigarette here to quiet your nerves. I've given them up. What for? To quiet my nerves. Well, I guess the only thing to do is to pick it up from the room and go on from there. If there's anything to pick up. Oh, there'll be something this time. It's bound to be. We nearly got him, and that means he wouldn't have had time to destroy every trace. That's what I keep telling myself. That's what I've been telling myself. Somewhere there's a he or she, a fat person, a tall person, a short person, a thin person, someone with dark or light hair, who's either right or left-handed. Who's getting the best of Ed Shea. Yeah, you're right. We'll never get him feeling sorry for ourselves. Now, let's go over everything we got right from the beginning. Whatever the boys find in that room, we can... Captain Shea. Yeah, that's all right. Let's have it. S.S. Dolphin. Sailing when? Freighter passenger. Hmm. All right, car, good work. Find anything else, call. Right. Goodbye. 
I think you need an ocean trip. You're looking tired. Let's have it. They found a newspaper in the wastebasket. The name S.S. Dolphin was circled with a pencil under the shipping news. When does she sail and for where? She sails in two hours for the Mediterranean. She's a freighter and they carry about 50 passengers. Could be a false lead. Could be, but we're not going to take that chance. Could also be our first real break. I'll take care of your passage and all the details. You go on home and pack a bag. Buy yourself some seasick pills and then get on down to Pier 13 on the east side. I'll meet you there. Fifty passengers. That cuts the odds out of the millions class anyway. Well, I'll see you at the pier, sweetheart. <laughs> Don't forget to bring a bottle of champagne. This is one voyage that'll need a launching. Well, here are your papers, passport. First thing you better do is see the captain. He should be able to help you. He'll get a big boot out on knowing he may be carrying a cold-blooded killer. So would I if I'd only could be sure of it. You better get on board. If anything breaks here, I'll send you a radiogram. If anything breaks on that ship, I'll send up a red rocket. I don't have to tell you to go carefully. Just remember, up until now, this devil, whoever he is, has been smarter than all of us put together. Because he may have slipped and narrowed himself down to the number of passengers in this cruise doesn't mean he's hooked by a darn sight. May I go now, sir? All right, you dope. Now, you take care of yourself. And don't make yourself famous by being number seven on his list. And that's the story, Captain Cole. Makes quite a lively tale. Now, what do you want me to do about it? Well, first, it? I'd like a list of all your passengers. We should be able to narrow the field down from that. And then? Then we'll try and narrow it some more. How? Why not let me worry about that? I'll worry about it, too, if you don't mind. This happens to be my ship. Okay. Uh, it's simple enough. Uh, if there are not too many suspects, I'll get to know them before we touch your first port. Now... What do you say we have a look at that list? Please send this wire to Captain Michael Shea. Here's the address. Uh, check authenticity of following passenger list. Mr. and Mrs. Robert Adams. Well, we've narrowed it down, Captain. Narrowed it a lot. 40 from 52 leaves 12. How are you coming, Lieutenant? I don't know who these nine people are or why they're traveling under the names they're using or whether they're honest or not, but I do know they don't fit the bill either. But that cuts it down to three. Now, would you mind telling me just how you reached this conclusion? Sure, these nine just don't fit what we know. I thought you said you had practically nothing to go on. We didn't, but that room we nearly trapped him in turned out to be quite a gold mine. Captain Shea sent me this about an hour ago. Let's see. The devil is a male between 30 and 40. Weight, approximately 185. Dark hair. But but how can this be known if you've never seen him? A police work isn't always running up a dark alley with a gun in your hand, Captain. Anybody who lives in a room can't help but leave evidence that science can develop into facts. A microscope can be more important in this work than all the Sherlock Holmeses in the world. What about fingerprints? He left none. As I said, he's smart. He must have worn gloves the entire time he was there. Anyway, you can see these nine don't fit what we know now. What are you going to do about the other three? Take them into custody? Not unless we have to. It's possible that all three of them are innocent. It's sure two of them are. We're still six days from Casablanca. I wanted to arrange that these three be put at the same table. Put a couple of women there, too. Well, yeah, I'll make the six of that group. <laughs> it's high time I got over my seasickness and join the party. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Kenyon. Mr. Kenyon, this is Miss Strong, Mrs. Fellows, Mr. Ricker, Mr. Yeah. Lowen, and Mr. Trout. Uh, a touch of mild to mare, Mr. Kenyon? Uh, I'm, I'm afraid so. I seems to be pretty well over it by now. Well, it can't be much fun. No, no fun at all. Now, Mr. Kenyon, it's all in your mind. Have you ever been seasick, madam? I have not, sir. <laughs> I'm not one for formality. My name is Carolyn. Everybody calls me Mac. Little Arthur, that's me. <laughs> How chummy. Mr. Trout, that's me. What's the matter, Trout? Sore because they moved you away from that blonde? I can't understand why they moved us. I don't like it at all. Maybe Mac here has a couple of ideas on that. Me? Well, why me? This is the first meal I've had since we left. Well, what difference does it make? 
Food is the same at every table, Mr. Trout. Yeah, I know. It's the company that bothers me. It certainly is a foggy night. Mm, Want to go in? Oh, no, I love it. It's so exciting. This is the first time I've ever been on a big boat. Pleasure cruise? <laughs> I guess you could call it that. I'm going to visit my brother and his wife in Alexandria. He works there. Where are you going? To Istanbul. Are you? Hutch! Oh, tight. <laughs> Maybe you'd better go get a coat. Huh? You, you don't want to catch cold. I guess I'd better. But don't go away. I'll be right back. Ah, oh, Mr. Kenyon. A nasty night. Oh, hello there. Uh, Arthur, isn't it? That's right. Mac. I'm a man who speaks plain, Mac. There's something mighty fishy with our friend, Mr. Trout. Not very friendly, is he? Oh, goes further than that. I don't know what your business is, Mac, but uh, you're in cabin 24C, aren't you? That's right. Why? Oh, any good reason why I should see Trout coming out of it? Coming out of it? What do you mean? Well, I locked it before I came on deck. Ah, maybe you did. I saw him coming out of your cabin just as clearly as I see you standing here. Who's that? Mac! Mac, Mr. Kenyon! Well, what happened? I, I, I fell down. Well, I don't understand. Well, don't let it worry your pretty head. I do. Kenyon? Kenyon, Miss Strong, come join us. Oh, oh hi there. Here, yeah, Carolyn, sit here. Thank you. What happened to you, Mac? You look all my step. Oh, I'm the clumsy type. I took a header. I tripped over something on the deck. The deck can be a dangerous place on a foggy night. What do you have? Well, that looks good. Yeah, make it two. I'll get them. Uh, did you check that little matter, Mac? I did. Everything seems to be as it should. You must have made a mistake. It's kind of dark down there. He probably has the next cabin. What are you two talking about? Well, we just... Oh, well, we men must have our secrets, you know. <laughs> I, I think you're awful. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, there's the gay Mr. Trout. Ooh, he certainly looks mean. I wonder what he did to his hand. Why? What's the matter with it? Well, I think he has a bandage on it. Why till he turns around? Maybe he fell, too. What's your business, Mac? Exporting. What about you? Oh, I'm just a guy who likes to travel. What do you do, Art? Um, salesman. Sell heavy farm equipment. <laughs> All very respectable. I wonder what pal Trout does for a living. Well, he looks like he specializes in hatchet murders. Hey, wait a minute. What? That sounds like another ship. Sure does. Maybe we'd better get out down the... Hey, what happened? Come on, let me help you up. We, we've hit something. That's putting it mildly. we better get to our boat station. Fast! <laughs> Lee Tracy, starring in the role of Mac in the proudly we hail production of By Day and By Night, will return for the second act in just a moment. Here's a message for the young men of our country. You're needed now in the United States Army. Join a real American team. There are excellent opportunities for good men in the airborne, armor, artillery, engineers, and infantry in a large number of fields essential to successful Army operations. If you have an aptitude for technical training, Go to your... In just a moment. And United States Air Force Recruiting Station. Have a talk with the recruiting sergeant and learn all the facts. Enlist in the United States Army today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star Lee Tracy in the role of Mac, your Army and your Air Force present the second act of By Day and By Night. Ever lift. I think it's disgraceful, absolutely disgraceful at my age, sitting in a leaky rowboat out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. That captain should be fired, fired. Take it easy, Mrs. Fellows. We'll be picked up soon. Don't worry. 
Not before I catch my death of cold. Wonder what it was we hit. It was another boat. Don't you remember hearing its horn? Sure. I was just wondering what... Will you what... please shut up? I want to sleep. Well, now, isn't that a shame? Mr. Trout wants to sleep, folks. Let's all of us be real nice and quiet. Sit down, Trout. I said sit down. Now stay there. Real rough, ain't you? Lost at sea with a, a gang of rowdies, that's what I am. Riker, you get up in the bow of the boat. See how far apart you two guys can stay from one another. Look who's given orders. Someone's got to. And Mac here seems to know what he's doing. I don't take orders from anybody. Oh, I think you're all being silly. We may be in this boat for some time. We might just as well try and get along together. We should have some kind of organization. My dear, you can't expect organization with ruffians. Well, we got to give it the old school try, Mrs. Fellas. If you'd like to vote on who's going to be in charge, it's all right with me, but one of us has got to take over. Food will have to be rationed. We should try to make a sea anchor. Regular authority, ain't you? Of course, I suppose that's to be expected. What about it, Riker? You want to take a vote? I said that's to be expected. All right, Junior, get it off your chest. What's the punchline? Copper. You don't say. Well, what of it? So I'm a cop. Although I'd like to know just how you found out, Brother Trout. Can't a cop take a vacation? But, but you said you... You said exporting. If I'd said anything else... Uh, You'd have imagined all sorts of things. Indeed we would. Imagination can play all sorts of tricks on you. Well, I don't take orders from a copper no matter what he's doing. If you're an officer of the law, I demand that you arrest them all. Now, we'll call this back here the jail. And you law-abiding folks stay up in that part of the boat, and we criminals will stay back here with the water and the grub. I think you're being very childish, Mr. Trout, and you too, Riker. A man's profession isn't going to make any difference out here. I say that Mac here should take over. I second that. I thoroughly agree. Well, I don't agree. I'll sit here and mind my own business, and you can dole out the food and water as you like. But I don't take orders from anybody here. <laughs> you characters forget one thing. The guy with the power is the guy that runs the show, and I got the power. Oh, well, upon my soul... Put away that gun, Trout. Don't try and give me orders, copper. Just sit right where you are, all of you. All my life, ever since I could remember. It's guys like you that have been making it rough for guys like me. I finally get on a boat and I figure I'm going to go someplace where they never heard of the word copper. And what do I find? I find you've got to follow me. You can't leave me alone. You've got to hound me. got to watch me like I was an animal. Well, you're all through watching me, copper, and everybody else. Ow! Look out! Put it down. Okay, Riker, I got him. Now listen, you. One more peep out of you and you'll spend the rest of this voyage with your hands and feet tied. Well, you get me? Take your hands off of me. Uh, maybe that'll keep him quiet for a while. Thanks, Riker. I owe you my life. <laughs> it's a laugh. Who'd ever have thought that I'd go out of my way to save a copper? Barbarians, that's what you all are. Ah, but exciting, isn't it? It's, it's bad enough being shipwrecked, but to find yourself in a boat with a... A, a killer? Oh, well, he is didn't... Is that what he is, Mac? I wouldn't know, Art. Yet. <laughs> Can't you sleep? No, not very well. I guess I'm too tired. Do you think they'll pick us up tomorrow? If the fog lifts, our chances will be much better. Those men, they... They don't like you now that they know you're a policeman. <laughs> Everybody loves a cop. He would have killed you. He's vicious. He frightens me. He won't do much now that he's lost his gun. But are you really on a vacation or... Or are you after somebody? Uh-oh. I guess there's no convincing anybody. 
Try to sleep. Well, another day and no luck. I think it's outrageous. What I wouldn't give for a good drink of water. We'll rot out here. They'll never find us. There's only a little water left. I know it. Keep it. Keep it in, in the locker behind you. I don't like the way Trout's acting. Really, in all my days, I've never had to put up with anything like this. Never. Shut up, you old goat. Why, why if I were a man, I'd thrash you in Save all my... Save your life. breath, Mrs. Fellows. The bog. It's breaking up. Hold her into the wind! Dale! should have taken Save a it. boat. Just bail. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> bail. Bail. Yeah, I'll sit here and watch the show. <laughs> oh, I, I wish the sun would go away. The sun can drive you mad. So many things can drive you mad. <laughs> this is positively the last time I'll set foot on a boat as long as I live. You can say that again, lady. Oh. oh yes. Water. Oh. <laughs> the big dump copper. Can't take it. Keels over before the women. Why don't we let him swim for a while? Do him good. Shut up. Or I'll let you swim for a while. Stool pigeon. I've had enough of your lip. Go on, go on, go on and murder one another. Yes, 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 murder. <laughs> murder. One of you three, the murderer. And, and I know, I know which one. What, what do you mean? I know. Don't worry, I know, I can't, you can't, you can't hide now, no, no place to hide. Can't go out the window. What is he babbling about? Why don't you shut up and listen? You might learn something. Learn something? Ha! Mac, Mac, lie down, try to rest. Take your hand off me. Cr Got something to say. Couldn't say it before. Man in this boat butchered six innocent people. Not going to do it anymore. Didn't know who he was. Smart. Too smart. Now I know. Tell the captain to hold... Mac! That's <laughs> out. Delirious, isn't he? He said he was on a vacation. L l listen. That sounds like... There it is! A white something! Shout! Do something! Hey! Over here! I always said it was much safer to travel by air. He, he's seen us! soon. They probably won't be able to pick us up until morning. Now, Mr. Kenyon, I'll make you number seven. Uh, hey, uh, what's going on? Grab uh, him, he's got a knife. I gotta stop making a habit of saving your life. What's his beef? He, he's the character. He's the character I was raving about this afternoon. How did you know? I didn't. I just figured I might be able to force his hand. It worked. He just tried to finish me. Six, you said. Boy, you, you'd never think it to look at him. No. <laughs> That had a lot to do with it, I guess. I think we'd better tie him up, just to be sure. You'll never prove anything on me. I've made monkeys of you before, and I'll do it again. 
Don't bet on it, Rover boy. And lie still or I'll bet you with this oar. You lousy cop. You know, Artie, I never was cut out for this business. I don't like to hunt people for breaking the law. But you're one guy I won't mind seeing done away with. <laughs> In fact, I like the idea so much, I might even save the state the trouble and expense of hanging you. I might let you swim home. What? Oh, you... You, you can't do that. Mac! Don't worry, I won't. Maybe if I was Riker here, or Trout, I'd do worse than that. But I'm a copper, remember? I can't break the law either. I've never been through such a nightmare in all my days. I shall report all of you, all of you to the governor. Oh, won't you, won't you please tell me what this is all about? Sure, kid. As soon as we can sit down somewhere with a steak and a barrel of water. Our star, Lee Tracy, will return in a moment with a word about next week's show. Here's a message to young men and young women. We Americans know, as defenders of freedom, that we must stand firmly for our rights and our principles and be prepared to fight for them. During these critical times, the United States Army has been expanding. That expansion must continue, and your help is needed. It's needed right now. And you yourself can get ahead in the Army because there are many opportunities for advancement if you have initiative, courage, and leadership ability. So visit the United States Army and the United States Air Force recruiting station in your neighborhood and find out how you can help. Enlist in the United States Army today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. By day and by night was written by DeWitt Cop. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. Join us again next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail, won't you? Our play is titled Ghost in the House, and it's an unusual story with some surprises. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.